TYT Sports coverage of the Euros continues. Uh, we previewed some of the bigger teams as they announced their squad, so make sure to check out that clip. But you asked, and of course we are going to deliver because we are the world's best duo in terms of servicemen. Don't take that sexually, please. <laughs> Either way, we will discuss some of the other teams and the underdogs. Maybe the teams are flying under the radar, but we do not start with an underdog. They were previously an underdog. They were a team that has been considered that, that the Freddie Adu of the national world, just on the cusp of greatness, and that is the Belgium. So Jason, <laughs> hit me with their squad because the talent that this team have drenched from top to bottom is something that has to be adored. So it includes uh, a top flight goalkeeper in Courtois, Francis. Yes, sir. Uh, obviously uh, a major part of Chelsea's Premier League winning title a year and a half ago, I'd say, or about a year and a half, a year ago. They also have, I thought, Lukaku's obviously going to be a major uh, piece of Fellaini. Get, yeah, no, they don't. <laughs> they have Dembele, they have, you know, uh, uh, Ningalon, and they have Witzel, and they also have a guy with a ridiculous afro. Uh, Benteke wasn't so good for Liverpool, except for, like, the first three weeks of the season where he was heading in goals, but we know no. he can be a threat yes. in the air. He's great at winning balls in the air. Edon Hazard showed up. His face is not on a milk carton in London anymore. <laughs> Edon Hazard showed up in the... I could just imagine the Belgian coach was just sitting there like, fucking... Thank God, like, thank God this guy is at least showing some signs of they life. They found him? They, they found, found him! Edward, go back! He's twin brother. Why yeah, can't I, I find the odds? Job. This is ridiculous. By the way, I, I need to make a point. When it comes to looking for world football odds, someone in the comments section, please leave me the easiest link to find because when it comes to American Ladbrokes. betting odds, you can go to 5,000 different places and they have it all really easy to read. But for like odds checker, you need to sign up. You have a browser setting error. Jason, can't Jason, read it. Jason. We're in the US, betting's illegal, so all the sites that they'll probably tell you, you won't be able to get into, because I've tried to I'll get into switch the, the I'll switch the IP address, <laughs> and I'll make it so I'm from Scott, or I'll ask uh, Mr. Maxwell to play some bets for me. Well, that's what I do when it comes to the Euro, so thank you, Dad. I don't know if that's illegal yes. here, but who knows, either way. Um, Belgium are stacked, as you would say in America, they are stacked. Kevin De Bruyne will be the star of that team. Many people assumed it was gonna be Hazard in the World Cup. Um, Kevin De Bruyne undoubtedly has performed better out of the squad, but look at the midfield as well. They have physicality and their Dembélé, great season at Tottenham. Nengalan, the player who might be going to Chelsea, they are circling the pond of the Roma star midfielder with the dodgy Mohican. Either way, <laughs> he is coming to the Euros on a fine form, and I think that he will be a definitely a player that can influence that team. He's almost like the Vidal of the Chilean national team, but. We don't want to ponder too much on Belgium because we have some underdogs to get to. And that means that Francis Maxwell, drum roll please, Jason, <laughs> is going to hit the audience with his first underdog. And they are not so much an underdog. I found knows. it! All right, well, I will get to my underdog in a second once Jason hits me with the Belgian odds. Belgium's 10 to 1. Okay, so therefore, they are not an underdog. They are a decent price. Jason, are you going to put a rare $10 on that to win $100? No, I'd put it on, uh, like I said... Uh, Albania, 250 so you're to one. So taking the Leicester <laughs> effect. Uh, the next team for me is Iceland. So what? Yes, first major tournament. Their have first the tournament. But uh, they only missed out on a trip to Brazil, as remember, with a playoff loss. Uh, but they went one better and they qualified automatically for the Euros, and they've done it in pretty confident fashion. And a squad that comes in with a fresh face. Uh, it's no surprise that the Mirror put them, ranked them 15th in their list of 24, uh, 24 teams. So uh, the Mirror actually had a good article. I'll leave it in the comment section below. And it's ranking the teams on where they see them in terms of favourites onwards. So uh, Iceland come in at 15, and I think they could be a good outside bet to make a good run. Not to win it, but just to cause some controversy for them. Do you know why I agree with you on that one, Francis? Why? Because uh, Ladbrokes, 80 to 1. Ah. They're 80 to 1 to win the... Uh, the whole euro. So ten dollar bet, you come out with eight hundred dollars, eight thousand dollars, eight hundred dollars. Right, yeah. Dan, eight hundred. You went ten to, to one. You went to school, right? Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Eighty thousand dollars, maybe in American money. Uh, but the reason I agree with you, Francis, is because Wales is also eighty to one. That's it. And Wales, people think they can make a run out. Go to Wales, number uh, thirteen. A bold statement from I believe I don't know who. Someone. I think, it, yeah, Robbie Savage. Robbie Savage, football pundit, said that Gareth Bale would walk into the England team and he is head and shoulders above any of their players. Not really bold. <laughs> he actually is. Yeah, what? no problem. So the head, and head and shoulders? Head and shoulders, shoulders above Harry Kane. God, why am I defending England so much <laughs> this year? And Jamie Vardy? Yes. Head and shoulders? I think head or shoulders. Knees and toes. So if you look at this team for Wales, right, so they have uh, 
They have a decent back line. They have some good players in there. I think one of the standouts for them is definitely Swansea international Ashley Williams. Uh, Swansea international. <laughs> Swansea <laughs> defender Ashley Williams, who's had a decent season amid Swansea's up and down season. Um, but I think when you look at the midfield, Aaron Ramsey, Joe Ledley, there's a lot of good, hard-working midfielders in there. King had a good season at Leicester. Um, but it's da undoubtedly down to Gareth Bale up top, who's not even who's on. Who's not even on this list? You know why? Because Real Madrid's season hasn't been concluded <laughs> that yet. Makes sense. That's what it keeps happening uh, on these lists. But I wanted to be point the out man. Andy King from Leicester and Tom Lawrence from Leicester. Uh, those are winners. Those are Just winners. Saying. No one else on that. Nobody over. else on that list. As we move, Wales are thirteenth on this ranking. Just below them is Sweden. Do you want to know the reason? Can you read that out for me, Jason, in the first sentence? Zlatan. <laughs> so they said Zlatan, but there are others, of course. But you won't be able to talk about Sweden this summer without mentioning the veteran superstar heading into what will likely be his final chance on the international stage. So um, they're in a tough group, though. Um, they are in Group E, which is alongside Belgium and Italy. 100 to 1. 100 to 1 to win it. Wow. Which, by the way, is, which, by the way, is 4,900 to 1 less than what Leicester was to win the Premier League. Jesus. Way Poland, next. You can't write out Poland, who uh, have, of course, one of the most dominant and clinical strikers in Europe, Robert Lewandowski, amongst a great other players as well. Strong spine, Gleek plays in there, um, and some other interesting pieces, like Milik, who plays in amongst Poland as well. So they're a good team. Switzerland come in at 10th, which is a bold pick, I believe. We move to Austria, who have got some star quality in their team, and they, of course, have David Alba, who oh. is one of their star players. Versatile for, I think he plays much higher up the park when it comes to Austria. I would... Try and convince him to play a little bit more defensive because great defences can get you through this competition. Portugal are, of course, a great team to, to highlight, seeing that Cristiano Ronaldo has to be admired no matter He's which tournament head is and in. shoulders above everybody on the England team. I think Gareth Bale definitely Gareth has a Bale is head or shoulder. You can choose one. Look at all these papers, man. So many papers. To conclude the clip, we're getting to Francis Maxwell's, drumroll please, team to make the semi-finals. Croatia. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot about them. People are not considering them an underdog solely because of the star quality they have, but tell me when had Croatia made a significant part of a major tournament as of recent? Not a lot. Uh, not a lot of history proves well for the Croatians who often wear a tablecloth as their national shirt. Either way, look at this lineup, Jason. I'm going to skip over their back line. They've got some good players on there, right? I guess I'm Mr. Forwards. Look at their midfielders. Oh, there's stuff. Uh, so that's what a couple of people in the comments section were making note of. Uh, that they're stacked in the midfield, uh, which Dude, I think is great. Let's just move over from Modric and Rakitic in a moment, right? Because we know they're great players. Kovac Kovacic, who plays for Real Madrid as well. Perisic has had a phenomenal season at Inter Milan. They are absolutely stacked in there. Stacked in that midfield. They will be a tough team. They will keep possession. It's all about the final product for Croatia, though. But do mark my words that with that midfield, you cannot say that this team couldn't possibly get to the quarters, if not the semis. They're in a tough group. I understand that. But when you look at Croatia, only Spain and France, I would say, in the whole of the tournament can compete with that midfield. Really? Yes. So Croatia's a good pick to go far away. So are you going to... But the problem is that if, uh, if this many people are talking about Croatia going far, right? And you, you're one of them, there's not, but there's not... There's a few others that yeah. I've seen who have picked Croatia to be an underdog. It means the money's going to start affecting... The Those betting, odds. yeah. So, so it's best do it to now. Get them. What is their odds right now? Can you find it for me? We won't pick it I up. I just right? had it up. I just had it up. But until then, by the way, I have Jason Rubin's pick for uh, uh, Euro's top goal scorer. Nice. I would Croatia's do. twenty-eight to one. That's not a bad bet. Well, there's still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teams ahead of them. Well, of course, but they're ranked six, by the way, on the list from the mirror. So uh, yeah. they have the only teams they have below them are Belgium, Italy, Spain, France, and uh, of course Germany. Germany. Uh, so uh, my pick, though, Francis, for for top goal scorer is right here. It's 20-1. to 1. It's Alvaro Morata. Oh. Well, I tell you what, Jason Rubin has slowly made his name for being the worst guy when it comes to supporting the team because they will <laughs> immediately hit an uh, inevitable downfall. In but a good decision. They will run the car into the garage. But a good man for picking top goal scorer. So who did you have in the World Cup, I believe? Did you not have Thomas Muller? Did you not say he was in there? Uh, well, I was going to, and then instead I think I put it on Balotelli. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was <laughs> taking aside the fact that he's a, a that you just liked uh, him. But you and no, Harry Kane well, this year. It was it was Mueller for the World Cup because you were like you should probably put money on this guy Thomas Mueller to start to like uh, score the most goals in the World Cup. I was like okay that's a good idea so I did that. Uh, Harry Kane was this year which worked out pretty well. Last year I took Sergio Aguero who was not the top goal scorer. No, he had a 
he had a little bit of an injury struck season, yeah. but uh, still obviously. A but good there was a point also. where he was close. So specific players, trust me. Actual teams, complete opposite. So we already gave our predictions as to who we thought are going to go on <laughs> and win. <laughs> Do you know when people put, ha, Jason, England. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's a common reaction. It's, it's almost mechanical now that when you say England, despite all their promise, it just doesn't happen. This season, I already went out on a limb and said that this is our best chance I've had in years. Going to Kermit um, the Frog all of them. Yeah, I, 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 think it, I think it could be interesting. My team to our underdogs Croatia. are Croatia. My team to win out of France. So... Hit us in the comments, what do you think? Who are the underdogs for this tournament? Is there anyone in there that we didn't cover? I'm sorry, Albania fans. We'll try and bring you a preview. Never. Hit us in the comments. <laughs> Speak to you soon. Francis underscore Max. So, Jason,